हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सॉफ्टवेयर टेस्टिंग एक्सपर्ट टॉक सीरीज टुडे वी हैव अ गेस्ट हु इज अ सॉफ्टवेयर टेस्ट कंसल्टेंट हैविंग सिक्स इयर्स टेन मंथ्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन आईटी इंडस्ट्री एंड इज स्किल्ड इन ऑटोमेशन टूल्स प्लस ही हैज एक्सपीरियंस इन वर्किंग विद डाइवर्स डोमेन्स रेंजिंग फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंकिंग स्मार्ट एनर्जी एंड मोबाइल फाइनेंस अवर गेस्ट इज राहुल सिंह राठौर वेलकम टू अवर शो राहुल थैंक यू सो मच फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी टूडे एंड आई एम रियली फीलिंग प्रेवलेज टू बी पार्ट ऑफ योर सेशन टूडे गाइस टूडे राहुल विल टेक अस थ्रू द नॉर्मल ऑटोमेशन विथ सिलेनियम यूजिंग पाइथन and then with automation with selenium using python with pytest framework and will demonstrate us which one is better in use while using selenium automation along with python language over to you rahul yes thanks ajay so yes today uh, okay uh, should i share my screen yeah go ahead please Uh, I can so, see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yes. So today uh, we'll be covering uh, Python with auto uh, automation using Python, mm -hmm. and uh, we will be dividing this session into three parts. So firstly, we'll start with the uh, Python, uh, like how this uh, is useful to automate our uh, uh, normal tests, and then mm -hmm. we'll uh, try to incorporate Pytest as a framework. Uh, mm -hmm. which will enhance the overall uh, experience of the python automation and thereafter uh, once we'll be able to transform our normal testing to a pytest testing uh, we'll uh, we'll come to more features that pytest provides us okay so i'll uh, today i'm using pycharm as my id and mm -hmm. i'm just creating a new uh, project uh, mm -hmm. to start with mm -hmm. and i'm just giving it a uh name it stet session mm -hmm. yes so this will now initiate uh, my project and for this the prerequisite will be the python python should be installed into your system mm -hmm. so we can easily go to uh, we can just type python download and go to website mm -hmm. and download python from right, right from here also we 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 can confirm the same mm -hmm. if we have already installed it mm -hmm. as you can see i can i i am having uh, python available to me and it has already provided me the prompt for python okay, okay. uh coming uh, so once this is up i'll just move to the session it is again it is getting ready mm -hmm. So yes, Python uh, itself will be a backbone of our entire automation today. Mm -hmm. so, moving, moving ahead, Rahul, just I have a question. Uh, so my question is, when there is so many programming languages available, then why specific specifically you choose Python for Selenium automation? Any specific reason for choosing it? uh yes sir actually uh, i think python is quite easier uh, to understand even a, a new programmer or a person who is uh, willing to learn programming he'll come to know that python is quite uh, uh, quite similar to the uh, english language that we normally use so okay. it will be quite easy to understand it will be quite easy to grasp mm -hmm. and overall the readability part mm -hmm. uh, for any new user it will be quite uh, easy and after that uh, if i if i'll come to the technical aspect yes python is quite faster in processing if you'll compare it with the other automation then you'll uh, feel that yes python is uh, really accelerating stuff and apart from that we have platform independence uh, that python provides us so be it uh linux beat windows mm -hmm. or beat any uh, any other operating system mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to readily use python to mm -hmm. 
uh, as a uh, language and do whatever you want so these are uh, quite a uh, use cases where we found that python is really useful and even today even these days in recent times you must have seen that uh, people are using it for data science artificial intelligence mm -hmm. so there is development uh, uh, which is rapidly growing uh, towards python because it is providing us so so many extensive libraries out of the box as well as uh, different uh, community wise i'll say we have good support for python so yes if development is going into that direction it will be uh, uh, good for us as a uh, qa Mm -hmm. to move in that direction as well because if more and more products are going to win python it would be good to understand python and use it in so many ways whatever way we want so yes this is these are few examples uh, with which i can say yes python is quite a good choice for us okay quite understood yeah please go ahead okay so uh, so today uh, we'll be using selenium mm -hmm. as Okay, so I'll be using uh, this website, tutorialsninja dot com, uh, to mm -hmm. be, to be used as a uh, to demonstrate our automation. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm just uh, just providing uh, one. So I'm just putting down one name for the my for my file. The extension would be dot py. You'll see that yes, I have got this. Mm -hmm. py file available to me mm -hmm. now so yes i'll start with uh, one more thing uh, uh, we should install selenium at the very start of the session because it will be used throughout so for python we uh, we have a different uh, kind of installation process Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll just write, and it is it is it is very easy as well. I'll just type pip install selenium, mm -hmm. and you'll see that it will download all the libraries required and everything. Okay. So it is now collecting everything, and yes, so selenium is now ready to use. Rahul, uh, I just I just saw you have written pip. So could you tell me what is pip and what is meant? by package installer in terms of pip yes so uh, pip itself is a uh, short form for package installer for python mm -hmm. so any anything that we require uh, to be used with python we can use it uh, we can uh, we python gives us this uh, utility pip mm -hmm. uh, which helps us to uh collect all the dependencies all the required stuff for example mm -hmm. if selenium if if there had been some dependency then mm -hmm. pip will itself uh take care of all the dependency and overall it will uh, uh during downloading selenium it will download its dependency then mm -hmm. once the dependencies are available in the system then it will download selenium uh, so for example here as well you'll see uh, we have two different packages installed when i uh, when i uh, typed pip install selenium so mm -hmm. so this is one of the example otherwise we could have gone to internet and uh, just search for selenium for python and you would have got uh, another uh, package which we could have downloaded or i would say in a old in a old fashioned way we could have downloaded it and put it down into the library folder mm -hmm. so again if you if you see my project explorer here Mm -hmm. you'll see that i have everything up here so if i'll go site packages you'll see that selenium is now available to me mm -hmm. so any any new package that i'll mm -hmm. see that the url lib as well the one that that was downloaded just now so mm -hmm. this is the benefit of pip and it is a package installer independent of uh, to to get worry about several dependencies that a single package may be containing so it will help us to uh, go to work instead of just uh, sitting there and uh, collecting uh, stuff and dependencies and getting resolved uh, resolved all those things so yes, this sorts out the work okay got it so so now we'll start uh, our first selenium 
program using python so okay. uh, here we have uh, import import function uh, so just uh, just do it from selenium import web driver so i'll be using web driver here mm -hmm. okay so uh, let's say uh, we are using we are going to use chrome okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i'll try so it is it is very similar to other language as well mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so firstly i'll just try to do a very simple task for mm -hmm. example our url would be this tutorial ninja demo mm -hmm. so yes i'll try to access this url using mm -hmm. python mm -hmm. and selenium okay. i'll just i'm just uh, giving a right click and uh, clicking on run registration okay mm -hmm. so it will now try to open so as you can see a new browser has been opened and our site has been loaded okay right, right. okay so now we'll move to next part Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, just a second. If I can just uh, yes. So this was uh, this was our uh, site. Mm -hmm. Now I'll try to. Uh, Firstly, I'll navigate to the site where the registration button. So I'll I can see that it is under my account. Then I should click on register, and there will be a registration page uh, where we can go to further register ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll just in inspect few elements. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'll just use the one that I've already created so that it will speed up the process. I'll, I'm just uh, taking out few X paths as well. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm taking out this. Mm -hmm. So this will be for my account mm -hmm. account link. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I need uh, I need to click. So I'll use that driver that was. Use driver dot find element by xpath. It will suggest auto suggest you each and everything that you want. Mm -hmm. Account link and mm -hmm. dot click. So I want that to be clicked. And after that, as we saw, uh, there was once we are clicking, then there is uh, the other links that we come across. So register and login. So I'll mm -hmm. try to use driver dot find link. But using link test, I'll try. Should work and don't click. Mm -hmm. I'll just quickly test it. I've ran it again to check whether we are moving in the right direction or not. Okay. So yes, I guess we are moving into the right direction. We are on the registration account page. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, over registration, and okay. I'll just quickly pick up more expats. To speed up this thing. Okay. I'm just using ID here. You'll see I'm using different kind of uh, selectors here. Okay. So for first name, I am just sending test STET. Mm -hmm. And for others as well, I'm just opening it up. So the last name should be something else. So I have put this. Mm -hmm. Then we can provide something in email id mm -hmm. for email id i am providing at gmail.com mm -hmm. 
I hope it will work. Okay, wait, I. So, in a similar way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just commenting. So, driver dot find element by ID mm -hmm. and putting down. Actually, they are in sequence, so that's why I'm just doing it without. Okay. Going through the screen each and every time. So, I'm just okay. entering one number. Mm -hmm. Now confirming password. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it will be password first and then it should be confirmed. Mm -hmm. Send keys is to uh, put down anything you want to the mm -hmm. browser. Okay. So yes, I guess uh, the form is complete. Uh, we have been till here, then I'll just click on this check button and then we'll continue. Okay. So now I'm clicking on continue button to move to the final page. Mm -hmm. So till now it should be able to click okay. and a success message will be displayed that will assert as well. So, uh, okay. I'll try to find it out using driver dot find element by xpath and then mm -hmm. this. I'll print as well as assert it to be more precise. So the message okay. that will get will be captured up in here and I'll try to print mm -hmm. it. And also there is one assert uh, statement that that will be helpful in testing. So assert this message with mm -hmm. our expected value and our expected value we should just uh, go and check what should be it what it should be. So maybe I'll just do till here, then we'll see what what will be the message and we'll add it to our test. So okay. now it will uh, just go to the site. As you can see, it is it has moved to the registration page. But yes, uh, we forgot to enter the email ID. So one second, there was such some problem with the email ID. Okay. Email ID, and yes, it should be input the name okay id is input email so yes now it should work i'll try to run it again okay there are uh, other methods like uh, 
as you can see the browser is currently in its current state so yes the your account has been created so we'll validate this itself okay so i'll try to check what is the exact message yes i'll see whether uh, it will be there or not okay uh, i commented it intentionally earlier so now we have our complete set ready i'm just changing it so that it will be a new user again okay okay so mm -hmm. yes so assert uh, has a, a property like we can give a failure message here but I, we know that it is not going to fail this time so yeah, it will be a mm -hmm. happy path scenario Okay. So as you will see, we have moved to registration page, and yes, it is filling everything. Continue. Yes. So finally, uh, okay. So yes, what we did, it it was it was just heading to an element. It found out an element, but we wanted a text. So yes, right. we're adding text. Okay. So now it will mm -hmm. the, the next time it will run, it will uh, the message will be uh, a text message, and we are expecting this has to be our text message. So again, I'm mm -hmm. changing it second time mm -hmm. so that it won't give us that the user is already registered. Right. Yes. yes. Ideally, it should work now. So as you as you see that assert. On assert itself, it got failed, and we got uh, the error. That mm -hmm. is, assert is failing, and the exact message was something else, and we were expecting something else. So this is something very easy to uh, get tested. So yes, this time it is passed with no error code. So yes, mm -hmm. our one of the tests is complete using Python, and you'll see that uh, there are very few lines, or I'll say just uh, kind of uh, very uh, high level. In a very high level, we have covered the entire registration page. So yes, this is why it is quite readable as well as quite understandable. And whenever anyone wants to extend it, for example, mm -hmm. there are a few other uh, inputs or uh, extra fields added on the registration. Then mm -hmm. a person, uh, the person who never worked on this code, can just go to the go through the code and he will himself understand. That yes, we need to add certain more uh, fields here, and it will work as it is. Okay. So yes, this is it. So uh, in a similar way, Ajay, so I can add driver dot close as well whenever it is. Uh, as you can see, I have got so many browser opened up. So mm -hmm. as I was explaining it, and wanted not to close it. So that's mm -hmm. it. otherwise driver dot close could be our tear down. So okay. Yes. So this is uh, one of the flows, as you can okay. see. So uh, yes. So as you see, uh, this is simple Python with automation. Uh, uh, automation with Python. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. only using Python and Selenium in this in this part. So okay. now, uh, as I told you, I'll be covering both. So we'll now try to incorporate Pytest as well into Python with Selenium. And we'll okay. see what kind of changes and what kind of features does it provides. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or uh, and even before that, I'll just uh, take you to the entire code that it will look like once we mm -hmm. complete the entire stuff. So okay. Here, here, one thing that I did is that I have already taken the JSON uh file for the xpath so that it, it has been used in so many uh test cases so i have used it as a separate file apart from that uh, everything is quite similar so mm -hmm. as you uh, as you saw uh, we imported web driver and then mm -hmm. uh yes this is just to uh take uh, xpath from the json file so this was i just load loaded json into our main code and then using in this way, instead of just hard coding, I have used it here. Okay, Apart okay. from that, everything is uh, similar. So as I was saying, uh, this is maximize window. This is registration click everything. So uh, I'll try to run this as well in a similar okay. way. Right click and run on registration. Right. You will see. 
uh, this is a complete flow and it's now and see browser is opened it is maximized and it has gone to the registration page mm -hmm. and everything so in this case the email was already registered so mm -hmm. you got the email warning message and it should have failed okay as you say a session is failed so this is kind of test failure scenario okay okay so okay. in a in a similar way we have login mm -hmm. uh, which runs into the similar way uh, so it will go to uh, it will go here it will go to my account then login it will click click on the login then put down email registered email and everything mm -hmm. and click on login so okay. we'll quickly run it to understand more mm -hmm. so it is now returning customer so login and yes it was able to login so okay here here again i'm using assert to check the final my account page and it was able to find it okay uh, i have got different scenarios as well where uh, we can have a uh, uh, item search okay if if we just type something like iphone here what should it be like what uh, is it showing me the correct uh, product on the page or if i am going to the iphone page whether uh, it is again showing mm -hmm. me the correct page and what if i'll try to add it to the cart so i'll okay. uh, i have added that as well so here you will see that mm -hmm. the url is same expected product title will be iphone and again mm -hmm. i'll okay. i'll get that url i'll go to that url maximize window and then go to the search field and click uh, and type iphone using send okay. so these are all the okay. same function that we used uh, in one of one of the initial cases so now okay as i was saying that there are two cases either assert will assert will be successful or else it will fail okay so once right. it is getting failed you you saw that uh, we got certain errors apart from that you can add your customized message here as well after uh, after okay. giving a comma after assertion you can give a failure message if you want otherwise that uh, detail uh, version of the assert that will be a default error message will be up on the log screen so now i'll go to the search caption uh, search page and uh, like once i have typed iphone i click don't click uh, the search search button and actual product title here the way we were able to bring out uh, text from the registration we are using the same and we are asserting it with the expected product title and we'll then mm -hmm. try to add to cart and we'll then see uh, whether okay. uh, one item has been added because when you see that if we are adding something then yes you see there is one items in the cart so we are validating that as well so i'll just run it again and you'll see when we will be using pytest i won't be using this right click and else. this is quite quite simple pytest will be offering a different mm -hmm. uh, kind of things so that will be covering in a while so i'm just uh, running this to Uh, make you understand okay okay uh one second so yes it should work now so running using right click and now it will move us to the page taking us to the site searching iphone then each and everything and validating and yes not uh, rk r test is finished and you can see there are no error so yes it got uh, one item into the cart and we can uh, we can check whether uh, it worked fine using now i am doing this one instead of one item i am adding it here two items let's mm -hmm. see whether it is going to fail or not this time okay uh, that's just going to take few moments so again it's going to start and yes it is initializing browser and now searching for iphone again mm -hmm. and now adding it to the cart yes as we can see there are only one items mm -hmm. and ideally it should be failing if our test is working fine it should mm -hmm. be failing mm -hmm. so 
you can see so we wanted here to be two items but it is failing it was one item right okay right. and you see that uh, uh, this assertion using assertion is quite easy here we don't uh, need to be having only ints or anything so here it it was kind of uh, finding in a string so my card value was a text uh, message and i just try to uh, check whether it is two items is part of that message or not okay so yes it's quite easy so now uh, this is how uh, selenium using python works and seems to be uh, compact and quite easier to understand mm -hmm. okay so now we'll move to the second part of the session where uh, we'll try to integrate pytest now mm -hmm. so pytest itself uh, is a framework provided uh, supporting python mm -hmm. and uh, there are so many good features that we'll see uh, in our like coming up session yes okay so yes So for that, as we installed pip, ins uh, as we did pip install Selenium, mm -hmm. we'll try to install PyTest. Pip okay. install PyTest again. So uh, Ajay, all the dependencies will automatically be downloaded and be there into our extended side packages. Now you'll see that uh, we'll have so many new things appear in side packages right. in some time. Mm -hmm. As you'll see, there are so many things that it got loaded, and finally the PyTest that we asked uh, pip to install. Okay. So now it is uh, ready, and uh, we can start doing PyTest. So that, before that, I'll I'll uh, show you a few things or few methodology that Python with PyTest follows. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you can see, I have written down a few comments here. Mm -hmm. So for PyTest, it is a principal rule that we should start our file with a test underscore. For example, uh, for the earlier file, you, sa you saw that we just wrote down registration. Mm -hmm. So to for, Py for PyTest to identify it, we should write it like test underscore registration or there is another way you can write down registration underscore test. Okay. Okay. So this is the first uh, first rule that we are following mm -hmm. to uh, get features of PyTest. So PyTest mm -hmm. will automatically uh, search for such files which uh, which is which it treats like a test file. So it will search for the uh, test underscore uh, in the beginning or underscore test in the end of the file name. Okay that uh, we've already installed pytest now mm -hmm. there is there is another feature uh, which is uh, which is reporting as mm -hmm. you saw using uh, selenium uh, and python uh, we were totally relying on our uh, terminal whether it could fail or not mm -hmm. or whether the results are passed or not mm -hmm. but from testing perspective it could be uh, it is very important to have reporting so uh, this is another part we'll have simple html reports using uh, one another uh, one other uh, installation mm -hmm. so i'm just doing it pip install pytest html which will help us to generate html reports okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so yes so pytest html is now available to us now uh, this, uh, the next part so for pytest uh, PyTest will look for functions. Uh, as you saw, for registration, we just wrote down a flat code without anything. So mm -hmm. for uh, for the same thing, if we want that to be part of uh, PyTest, mm -hmm. we will write anything like uh, test registration form, okay? So okay. this is how we define function into the Python. Mm -hmm. So if I'll just run it, uh, you'll see that uh, it will not uh, run anything now. 
Yes. You'll see it is blank, completely blank, because now uh, we are trying to incorporate Py uh, test here. Okay. But if if I if I'll write something like Py dot test into my terminal, and I'm on the same uh, project level, okay, STT session, I'm at mm -hmm. this. I'll just write Py Py dot test. Then you will see, yes, there is something happening. So okay. you you saw that one one is passed. We'll, we'll go into the details, but I'm just telling you that this is how PyTest is going to recognize whether you want something to be tested. We have we have already uh, uh, followed the rule. The file name should be test underscore. It's starting with test underscore. Again, uh, the test name, it should be within function. Otherwise, it is not going to uh, treat you like uh, a test. Okay. As you saw, there were two files. Registration, it totally ignored the first file because mm -hmm. it knows it is not a file uh, that I want uh, or a user want to te get tested. Okay. 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 Hmm. So now uh, we'll try to incorporate a few features here uh, or a few code here so that uh, the same things will happen. So I'll just copy and paste all this and we'll align it accordingly. Okay. So here uh, we can use this to be part of. So Ajay, uh, in this uh, case, we are using exactly same code, but following PyTest methodology. And you'll see okay. we have some print statement, we have assert, we have close everything. Now you'll, you'll see if I'll just do, even after, uh, even if here I'll do run test position, it will it will not do anything because it is expecting PyTest to run it. So I'll just type okay. pi.test and you'll see that yes, something is gonna happen. It has collected one item. Now it will follow the entire process, registration, everything, and continue. Now it will fail because uh, we were expecting a new user to register, but this user was already registered in previous test. So okay. it got failed. Okay. So here you see one failed, and there was this registration error. So now you can see we have a little different kind of uh, log uh, logging output in here terminal. So okay. this is all. Uh, and you'll notice that we didn't get this thing, print message. There was never a message printed. Right. So, yes, for this, for that, we need to have hyphen S into our command. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I am just registering a third user here. And you'll see. Yes, pi dot test hyphen s. I'm just doing this. Mm -hmm. And now it should be passed as well as printed that message as well into the terminal. Okay. So yes, as you saw, this is the same message that we tried to print last time. Mm -hmm. Now it has been printed. But if it if it had, would have been without hyphen s, it it was have been ignored. So you'll see that we used pi dot test hyphen s. Now mm -hmm. we have another options as well hyphen v. Hyphen v stands for verbose. Uh, here we'll see that uh, we have very uh, so the so this is how our test started. Mm -hmm. Pytest hyphen s. So it collected one item. It has provided a few in internal details about the platform. So now it has collected one item and no more uh, details. But if we'll write hyphen v here, we'll have detailed version of this terminal. So uh, this is how uh, Pytest works. Okay. And Again, it is performing same test. It should be failing this time because we forgot to uh, add new user. So it was failed. But you'll see that this time it has got more and more 
metadata platform details and everything before hyphen v it was uh, capturing very minimal details that was required so whenever we right. want uh, a detailed uh, uh, version of the logging or terminal details then hyphen v should be used okay okay so uh, yes i'll now move to the other part uh, where i have completed this earlier to save the time mm -hmm. Here you will see that this is PyTest, yes. As you saw, uh, I was using this one, PyTest test underscore registration, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is exactly same thing that we did, but I have, uh, as you will see, I have commented out a few things and uh, also added a few things. So these are some of the features that you'll see that Python is providing us. For example, uh, we know that we have already registered. So mm -hmm. yes, first of all, uh, I have added test login in a similar fashion that I did test registration. Test add to cart, you'll, you'll notice that I have been adding test underscore uh, before the name of the function, uh, just to make sure that uh, PyTest pick these up, okay, as a test cases. Okay. Test underscore login, test underscore add to cart, test underscore. So, uh, so very, uh, very uh, initial feature. As we know, uh, we have already registered this user, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and if I'll run it for the very first time, this this is gonna fail as it was happening earlier that I, when I said, okay, I forgot to add a new user. So PyTest provides us one of the feature which is known as skip. Mm -hmm. So if I want uh, this test to be skipped, mm -hmm. I can just simply add this annotation. So I can just do it here itself. If I want this to be ignored, mm -hmm. okay. So I'll import PyTest first. Mm -hmm. And it is going, okay. Okay. And now I'll, I'll just do a login part. I'll pick up this login part here just to explain few points. So here it is just login and uh, yes, driver was inside. Mm -hmm. I'm just adding few details to Okay. It will click on the login button, then finally a message will be asserted. Okay. okay. So I know it should be registration button. I can simply get it from here. Firstly, it should click on registration then a link login will be created just there. i'm using an id directly okay for the password as well mm -hmm. And then we'll click the final button, the login button. So it will click on login and for the text, mm -hmm. I have this already written down. So yes, 
So as I told you that uh, PyTest will look for test underscore uh, functions. So these two tests ideally should be picked up, but I am asking PyTest to skip this one because we have already registered it. And if, we'll, if, we, if we are gonna uh, test it again, it is gonna fail. And we want, uh, and we know it is logical that once the user is registered, registered then it should be mm -hmm. able to log in instead of just uh, trying registration and again, again and again. Now you'll see that it will skip one of the uh, tests and it will just do login part. So okay. we'll just do pi.test hyphen s. So uh, first of all, uh, one part was skipped, okay? And one mm -hmm. is error. We'll just check why this error is there, okay? So mm -hmm. we, actually we copied it from the that file. So there was one extra parameter into the function. Okay. As you can see, uh, it will try login only. It will not try to, Okay, what happened? Okay, it is unable to find some element. So it was able to register. Okay, we'll try to add some implicit weight here. Just to check. Register then login. Okay, we don't want it to be registered. We want it to click on account and So I'm adding implicit weight as well, just to make sure that some loading or another thing point. So yes, it has gone to the login part and it is able to log in. So in the final result, you will see that one is passed and one is skipped. So this is one of the feature that uh, PyTest provides us and uh, uh, it has clearly uh, saved us from a faulty uh, test result because had it been failing, then uh, it would have uh, sent a, a wrong information overall because registration was successful independently. So uh, now uh, if we want, like uh, there are some other features as well. So if you want, uh, for example, there are like test underscore, uh, calculation okay. or I will say math. I'll say math. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is math one where I am asserting one equal equal one. Okay. Okay. I'll show you some, uh, some features based on these small examples. Mm -hmm. So, yes. So as you, uh, as you saw, I have added math in both the functions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And what I'll try to do, I just want like uh, only math function, only functions which having math in their uh, only test, which are associated with math should be picked. Mm -hmm. So there is one feature, which is hyphen K. It mm -hmm. will pick up keywords. If I'll give a math keyword, then it will skip all of this. Even if I'll just remove this skip part, I'm just commenting it out. Mm -hmm. So now ideally it should be, it should, there are four contenders for this file for test cases. But if I, if I've given math as a keyword, then it will pick only two. Mm -hmm. So as you saw, two have been deselected. It did not select those because they were not falling under that keyword. Okay. okay, that is one of the uh, one of the feature that is quite helpful. For example, if you have a test suite uh, where uh, you have marked few uh, cases of sanity or smoke test, you just need to add uh, uh, a smoke somewhere in the function name, and you don't need to keep it in a separate file. You can just uh, give a command from here, like I just want smoke test to be run. Okay, and it will be uh, just uh, collecting all the test cases where smoke has been uh, part of the name and mm -hmm. it will pick up and will run only those. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so this is another good feature. 
as you saw uh, this was going to be failed because one is not equal to two and it was failed and one went false so now uh, we we installed html uh, uh, report as well okay so we'll try yeah. to make a report out of this what kind mm -hmm. of report will it show us mm -hmm. so i'll just try test map.html so now you'll see i'm just adding few uh, parameters uh, right mm -hmm. uh, in the command line Mm -hmm. And this is how whenever we want is to be integrated to our CI CD pipeline or something. So we have all these features available to us. We can just configure all of them there as right. per our need. Mm -hmm. And it will be a good, uh, good to go for CI CD as well. Right. So if I'll just click it here uh, this time, it should give me a HTML report along with these. Okay. So uh, four items, four was deselected somehow. Why? Okay, because I I put down the smoke just to explain. So I'll just add math. Okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, the same HTML report was available to us, and we can just go and check whether it is. You will see that this is one of the report mm -hmm. packages platforms, but everything was deselected. So there is nothing to be shown in the test report, final report. But right. now we have given math in the keyword and once we'll click it, it will pick up two tests uh, out of which one failed, one pass and do deselected. Okay? okay. So now again, uh, we did not change the name of the report. So it has given us this report. I just refresh, try to refresh it. And now you will see, yes, there have been uh, two tests in this run, which took seven seconds. Apart from that, the environment that we are, uh, that we always uh, bothered about, like what kind of uh, uh, platform dependency was there, whether when test would fail. So all, everything got mm -hmm. captured here in the report. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have uh, only failed report. There is this check mark or uh, so. So this case was uh, test math one was passed, test math was, was failed. And in a similar way, we can add our custom logs here as well. As you can see, there are no logs output. So while designing a framework, we can add the logging feature as well. And uh, all customization, customized logging will mm -hmm. be part of this uh, failures or past scenarios. So we'll be able to gather all the information right from uh, the report itself instead of going through the code and debugging it. We can just figure out where uh, it was uh, failing or if it has passed, how much time it took and everything. So mm -hmm. right now, because we were just, uh, it was just calculating equate, equation, equating something. So it just took us almost negligible amount of time. Okay. So this is what uh, uh, HTML report would be. Mm -hmm. So these are few features. Again, uh, if you, if I want, uh, I know that this this test is gonna fail. Or for example, in real life scenario, I would say there is one feature that is uh, yet to be resolved by the team, and we know that it is fa uh, failing. But yes, we want our test suit to be run. Uh, what in that case? Like, how can we uh, uh, deal in that situation? Either we 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 should uh, keep the test cases for that particular functionality like out of that file so that our entire suit uh, won't display our own meaning or i mean uh, we either we need to filter out whether uh, if if some test cases should not be part of that uh, suit or not or else we need to comment out certain lines of code uh, mm -hmm. which are dealing with that test case but in pytest we have another uh, annotation uh, which is known as x fail for whenever I am marking that as X fail, it will not uh, uh, take it as uh, it will not consider it as failed because this is as per our ex, uh, this is as per our expectations that uh, this case is failing and maybe in the coming uh, coming uh, releases or something it is going to pass. So again, when I'm trying, I'll try to execute it. You'll see. One is passed. Now there is uh, no test which has which has failed, and one is passed. One is X failed. That was expected failed. That was expected failure, and um, uh, it is not showing us a, a bad picture, and it is showing uh, showing it is giving us correct information itself. 
So if I'll go to report again, and you will see that this is X field. So whenever someone uh, wanted to know, uh, like if we have some functionality that we are aware of and is currently failing and we are waiting uh, for that to be resolved. So yes, that uh, then X field, that expected field can be uh, seen here. And so uh, the pass count is one, there is no failed count and only count is one expected failure. So overall our test uh, run is good and we don't need to uh, change our test suite as it is. And whenever, whenever this functionality comes up, that means the uh, this part has been corrected. We can just either comment it out or just remove this X fail uh, annotation and uh, run the entire suit uh, to get the uh, exact status at that time. So this is another functionality that I wanted to explain, which I found very useful in uh, everyday scenarios. So uh, now I'll move. I'll move to the exact uh, uh, demo part that we were uh, using. Uh, so tutorials ninja on tutorials ninja. So yes, you will see that I have. Uh, I have added all the functionalities, test registration, login, add to cart, and test logout as well. So coming next part is uh, the very important part from PyTest and is fixtures. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, Ajay, you must have seen that we have been repeating uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, coding again and again. Mm -hmm. Like for registration form, uh, uh, we need to call driver again, uh, then uh, go to the URL. And mm -hmm. then so many repetitive tasks that we wanted to perform for each and every test. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, if I'll go to the complete set of uh, flows, mm -hmm. you will see that same thing is happening uh, for, uh, yes, for here. The same thing was happening again and again. So I have tried to minimize it. You, you won't see in the final, the complete uh, uh, demo, you won't see that uh, I have been repeating that the part again, that I have no, I'm, I'm not going to the URL. I'm not going to, uh, to the, uh, uh, test, uh, again, the same part in all the, uh, test cases. So there is one special feature known as a fixture. Mm -hmm. Uh, so whenever we want to reduce our, uh, uh reduce a task that is repetitive or we can say uh, we can just uh, write it down in one single place and that could be used by all the test cases that we want. So mm -hmm. uh, this is what a fixture in like a living word, I will say. And uh, in technical words, uh, we can say for a framework, we always define certain setup and tear down functions. So fixture mm -hmm. provides us to facilitate those, uh, uh, those services here. Uh, so, uh, we can write down any uh, any na method name. For example, uh, I have given a setup, but we can uh, write it in any any form. So if if I'll see that, uh, just ignore this part for the time being. Okay, I I I, I decided uh, to list down few common things that I I was doing in all the on all the uh, test cases. So this was like mm -hmm. going to the URL, maximizing window, then implicit paid to add it to the driver, web driver. Mm -hmm. And then finally it was closing. But you'll see there is one special keyword that is yield. And this is again, uh, uh, signifies that we want something uh, that should be starting with this and then some customized action. And then final step should be driver closing. So yield is that keyword. Mm -hmm. That uh, guides are uh, that guides Pytest to pick the next part from the calling agent. For example, I'll try uh, to use this setup function. Uh, as you can mm -hmm. see, that I have added setup, setup, and in all the parameters, parameters part of our test cases. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. execute setup function using test registration, and setup function mm -hmm. itself is uh, providing me a setup. Uh, uh, statement like this and mm -hmm. the final closing statement like this and the yield statement will be replaced by this function itself the entire part will be replacing yield so next time when test login will be uh, uh, calling setup then first four lines will five lines will be as it is then yield will be replaced by test login 
the, this entire code and in a similar way so i am just reusing my uh, code again and again uh, the repetitive part has been now merged into a single uh, function so for using this i need to because uh, i this is this is going to be the special uh, function for our file so pytest mm -hmm. uh, should know about it so this mm -hmm. is another annotation that is at the rate pytest fixture and uh, once we write it down uh, you will see that uh, it will identify the pytest will identify it as fixture that is a special function which, which is it's going to uh, uh, repeat again and again using yield statement and replacing the exact test case uh, in place of this so now uh, uh, as you saw uh, there was this thing also added in the uh, earlier so uh, we have got two types of scope in here so this entire uh, this entire especially i'll try to uh, i'll show you uh, uh, after running it just a second so yes i am in pytest automation pytest automation is itself this part i'll as you guys uh, as you know now that i just need to type pytest hyphen v hyphen s and hyphen hyphen html for html report report dot html uh, report to dot html i can say so it will try to execute all the test cases what happened okay html the spelling of html what messed up yes mm -hmm. We'll go to the logs again. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, it collected four items again. It ignored this part because this was not part. Uh, this was not uh, containing test underscore. Again, uh, we wanted uh, this to be part of our fixture, so we have added this annotations. So four test cases were covered, and you will see that there are some passing failing and behind the scenes it was acting. Okay. So overall, uh, mm -hmm. I got one failed, three pass, and one error. So uh, if I go to the report, I'll just copy this. So this is the report path I'm getting with my within uh, my terminal. I'll just go to this report to check what is happening. As you can see, uh, two were passed, and uh, there was one error with the tear down. We'll check that, but yes. Uh, that was not failed. That was passed. Uh, for fail, yes, test registration code failed. That we already know that we can add test uh, x fail to ignore that part because registration has already happened for this user. Uh, so now I'll explain. So as as we were talking, like uh, this part was executed for each and every task, and then yield, and then driver would close. Mm -hmm. Once I'll remove this module, uh, you will see a difference that this part uh, so there uh, scope scope says us two thing whether we want these old test cases uh, to be part of like end to end uh, once registration then login then add to cart then log out finally closing the browser that is one single driver on a single browser screen should be doing everything that is end to end or what we want uh, there can be another case when we want one browser to get involved on registration it should get clo closed uh, once registration test is finished, then it should invoke again for the login, and it should be closed. And there. so there are two kind mm -hmm. of uh, cases uh, we can encounter. So this is where scope comes into the picture. When that was scope was module, you saw that it ran. So this part was running, and after that yield, yield was uh, yield took registration as first code. Mm -hmm. Then without invoking again or without going to close, it took login step. Then adding to card, then log out. But now, when I have uh, removed the scope, uh, like scope is not set to module, it will now stick to the method. So it will be uh, sticking to the function. So its, it's scope is now function itself. So it will setup will be called till here. Then a function will be called the code of the function, and then it will close again. And so it will be invoking somewhere around four because four tests are there. So we'll try again because I have removed the scope. So now, if you'll see, mm -hmm. you will get to see that it will it is going to close. 
so yes so first time it was closed completely now invoked again to check login so in a in a similar way it is going to uh, perform this step four four times so i hope you understood that end to end whenever we want on a single screen then we need to uh, mark that as scope as module otherwise it is going to uh, invoke and close browser for each and other test so this is totally up to our requirement that we want mm -hmm. so i hope it is going to finish yes so finally uh, the fourth test because that was log out because we were never logged in a new browser was uh, invoked so it it won't get log out button and it should be failing so as you will see one was x failed because we already marked the registration as x failed one failed test case should be that one uh, the one that we recently talked about so if i can just go to the report again you will see yes this is a report no <clears throat> so this is the report now you see that uh, logout was failed logout was failed because we were never logged in so yes it was unable to find out logout button so login was paused right. at two cards if it had been, if, if if it would have been an end to end case then yes it should have passed because uh, firstly we would have logged in and without closing the browser we would have searched an item and then after mm -hmm. searching and adding to the cart we would have go to the logout button and as the user was logged in it was into the same session it would have been passed mm -hmm. and clearly logged out successfully so mm -hmm. this is one uh, one of the cases where fixtures are used now uh, what if like we have seen for a module we have seen uh, for a single file it will work fine but what if we have uh, like a page object model and we have uh, used uh, different uh, pages uh, to catering to different parts of the uh, website but even after that we we have to invoke browsers again and again uh, using those same urls and so so mm -hmm. in that case uh, we have a special uh, file known as conf test configuration file for test so mm -hmm. the same this is the same function i'll just uh, take you to the both the files to understand better uh, just a second yes so this was a normal uh, normal fixture where we use it for a single file it won't be accessible mm -hmm. to other files or other test files i will say but if we want uh, this fixture to be available to the entire project what mm -hmm. in that case there are some common common things that should be used by the entire project so mm -hmm. in that case we have this special file known as contest in contest mm -hmm. we are uh, we are not doing anything special it is just that whenever a uh, fixture okay uh, so one thing i missed was this so there are two ways you can uh, ask pytest to use fixture in a test case so mm -hmm. one was this like you can just add the name of the uh, fixture method for instance mm -hmm. in this case i have added setup or there is one other annotation using annotation as well you can uh, do it like this uh, pytest.mark use fixtures and you can just uh, give the name of the fixture mm -hmm. so this will again uh, be a, if if i'll just remove it from here it will be one and the same thing okay so whenever uh, whenever you are mark whenever you are asking uh, some test case to use fixtures it mm -hmm. will search for its file first for example uh, here we have setup so it will try to search whether setup is there in the module or not so mm -hmm. we if we get set, setup here itself then it will invoke as per this setup otherwise what if uh, it is not present here then it will look for a configuration uh, file that is contest so any time it will uh, it, it it don't find anything inside the same file it will search for a special file known as contest file in contest file whenever uh, uh, so there's the main purpose of contest for because it will be a common place so and it and if we if we we'll, if we are going to now use setup anywhere inside our uh, project then 
automatically our pytest will search that uh, instead of uh, giving some error our pytest will uh, go to conference will check whether the same uh, thing is available there or not and if it is available it will uh, use that part again there are uh, scopes that i am going to uh, explain you so now so whenever uh, we are using conference so we have a uh, one more uh, so till now we have been using only functions uh, but now we are moving more towards object orientation and we'll be using class so class under class will have a number of test cases and now if we'll add some fixture as i was saying for page object for the entire page we can add uh, Uh, entire page details or uh, code under one class for example uh, uh, here we can add class login and using login class we can give all the test cases and and everything uh, that need to be part of login will be uh, uh, covered using a single line uh, mm -hmm. using this fixture so this is kind of again uh, making it more uh, compact uh, and not just writing everywhere you you must have seen that we were writing this stuff again and again uh uh yes so okay so this was set up here set up here and then uh again we were writing set up again and again so instead of this we we have just moved to a class and we have given this set up as a fixture on this class itself so all the test cases under this class will be uh using this fixture now so this is uh, one part so contest in contest i have done nothing special but the same uh, uh same set of function that was uh, there in the module i just copied it into the special file known as contest.py and now i'll try to uh, uh use it in our class so now as you see there is nothing like uh, setup inside our uh, module or mm -hmm. this file so it will go the pytest will go to the contest file within this project and if it it will find setup then it will be running as it is otherwise it will say uh, no uh, giving some error it will say i don't find for example i'll just uh, put down setup one because there is no, there is no setup one as a fixture in our file nowhere it is inside contest so now ideally it should provide up uh, some error so py dot test you will see uh, that that i did not find the path the path that has been given i did not find it anywhere and mm -hmm. had it been there like if i'll just correct it i'll just set up there is no path Uh, there is no file, no setup function here in this file, but yes, the contest contains it. So it will go, con it will go to contest and try to uh, use that. So I do test. If I just click it, it has collected four items without in, any error. Uh, as you can see, I have already skipped registration part because that was already done and uh, was going to be uh, uh, fail in any case. So yes, now all other parts are going to. over mm -hmm. so i think you will have uh, one question regarding scope again because i uh, i uh, showed you a uh, scope in module okay but now when we have class defined and over class we are using fixtures and there is one another uh, scope that is class and if we'll if we'll just uh, remove it it will be applied to each and every task uh every test case is inside so now uh, so last time what was happening it it just uh, invoked browser once and run ran end to end and after logout mm -hmm. it was completely uh, like closed before that it was uh, handling on the same browser but once i have removed mm -hmm. scope from class to default and default will be test case itself again as was in the case of uh, a module uh, fixture now you will see different kind of run it has closed it 
now it will invoke a different browser so the default scope of any fixture is going to be the test case itself otherwise mm -hmm. we can just override it with the uh, two different kind of uh, a scope that is first one is a module that is the file itself the one file uh, under which one, all the test cases will be executed and after that uh, the driver dot close or the tear down will work uh, otherwise we have class as well where uh, for entire class scope will be applicable so for all this so ajay i think uh, uh, this is it from fixture as well and i have covered most of the cases so it would be good to have some questions if you have great uh, rahul so yes i have a question uh, so as we have seen uh, selenium automation with python and selenium automation using pytest as a framework with python so uh, in short can you brief and conclude both of them uh, in short points if possible uh, yes uh, sure uh, ajay so yes uh, we started with the uh, automation with python selenium so in that way uh, mm -hmm. we were having very crisp coding and everything but there were some salient features that uh, from the testing perspective i would say uh, were missing for example we were not having this reporting kind of stuff uh, like uh, apart from html uh, reporting we have this uh, failure passing and skip uh, uh, computation being done by pytest so this is one of the mm -hmm. basic thing that as a, a, a qa person uh, would like to know uh, whether the test case has been mm -hmm. up, uh, so this is given out of the box by pytest otherwise uh, uh, while using python automation uh, will be need will will need to add few uh, code to uh, like give us some values and everything so it will be customized in the in there but here it is out of the box uh, apart from that mm -hmm. uh, yes it is uh, open source and uh, quite powerful i in terms of assert uh, like you have seen uh, there was no uh, no stopping in case of uh, mm -hmm. using assert in any way be it uh, mathematical be it uh, computational or anything and pytest uh, mm -hmm. as a uh, gives us certain uh, features for example python mm -hmm. x uh, dist uh, is another uh, uh, library that we can install and we can uh, make use of parallel testing so we can have parallel mm -hmm. executions in uh, 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 of the test cases so that that part mm -hmm. was not provided with python uh, independently uh, and uh, mm -hmm. coming to next the html reporting itself so every time a qa person will love to have uh, uh reporting final reporting apart from being in uh, logs or terminals we want something that that is presentable so yes pytest provides us this uh that part as well so uh mm -hmm. i think pytest uh, wins here and as it from the testing perspective yes it will help us in overall quality and uh, maintenance of the script as well as uh, uh, extensibility of the uh, script from testing framework point of view it will be uh, more good with python uh, by uh, pytest while in python we need to be uh, doing more laborious work and we need to write down number of codes uh, to get things done the one we are getting out of the box here so yes okay so thank you for explaining this and uh, talking over uh, pytest uh over of course uh, automation with normal python selenium so i have one more question rahul uh, what if a user forgot to check uh, if uh, they has chrome driver or firefox driver installed on the test server or not how does uh, pytest or python uh, help in uh, resolving this issue so yes uh, so yes Uh, i think i uh, uh, so yes ajay uh, this is a good question uh, so yes many times we face this uh, problem that uh, we are missing uh, chrome driver or the web driver uh, in common terms for firefox chrome anything 
So yes, uh, in Python itself, we uh, we are uh, lucky to have another uh, good uh, module, or I will say, uh, library. Uh, so uh, there is one simple installation that needs to be done. That is pip install pytest. Uh, one of this one. Uh, one second. The web web driver manager. So web driver manager manages everything up here. So instead of giving the exact uh, path of the executable, or uh, as we uh, as we always give the executable path is so and so uh, on the local system, uh, we need not be dependent on the local system uh, when we are using uh, Python. Uh, so whenever you are having a web driver manager installed, you can simply type like for example uh, driver. Uh, we want driver, but web driver dot the Chrome driver if you want, then we can just write down Chrome. And after that, this would have been the normal scenario. But what if the situation that you were talking about comes up? Then we can just simply type driver dot manager dot install and it will automatically pick up the latest driver or I must say the compatible driver. Uh, that is uh, meant to be uh, 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 working fine with your current installation of the Chrome or any other browser. For example, you were uh, 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 in the logs as well. Uh, you will find out that web driver manager was doing his stuff. So current Google Chrome version was this. So uh, latest driver version was this, and so it picked it up and uh, it took it out. Dot exe that was required and do the work in a similar way if we'll write firefox uh, uh gecko driver it will come up with firefox uh web driver so i guess this is uh the uh savior for such situation okay 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 also i think we are coming close to the closure of the session so uh i would like to ask if you want to say anything before we wrap up this session. Yes, Ajay. So yes, uh, it was really nice uh, that you invited me. And uh, I'm really glad that uh, the kind of session you are currently conducting and it is giving us a good uh, exposure to a number of different uh, kinds of tools and frameworks uh, so that a person who wanted to learn uh, can just go through your uh, sessions and can finally make mind like in what direction or what kind of uh, tools he want to uh, prefer or want to be like Excel with. So this is a quite a good platform, I would say, and you are doing a uh, really good work and it is really going to help so many people who are uh, there uh, looking for some good resources. So yes, Ajay, thank you so much for uh, your efforts. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, thanks for being part of SGET journey. And uh, thanks, Rahul, for your time and giving such a great session on both Selenium automation using Python and Selenium automation using Python with PyTest and explaining difference between them as well. Hope our uh, audience will learn a lot from it. And uh, we are looking and expecting for more such sessions from you in the upcoming days. Thanks a lot, uh, Rahul. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much.